welcome to worship today. I'm Pastor Laura, this is Fuji. The flowers that you'll see on our altar today are in celebration of Jean Huffy's 90th birthday, which happened this past week. Happy birthday, Jean. We hope you'll enjoy worship today. We begin our worship today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amid the shadows of this world, let us confess our sin and welcome the light of God's forgiveness. God of grace and truth, in Christ Jesus, you came among us as a shine light shining in the darkness. We confess that we have not welcomed the light nor trusted the good news of great joy. Forgive us and renew our hope so that we may live in the fullness of your love, trusting in the grace of Christ our Lord. Amen. The angel said, You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. With great joy, I announce to you the entire forgiveness of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Near the end of Israel's exile in Babylon, God promises to bring the people home. They need no longer be afraid, because the one who formed, created, and called them by name now redeems them from all their enemies. God declares them precious and honored, and God loves them. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, our save, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. 
I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders, and the Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Hello, friends. Psalm 29 is a very unusual song of awe and praise. Why is it unusual? Well, Psalm 29 is full of chaotic, violent images. In Psalm 29, God is unleashing fire and making earthquakes and snapping trees like twigs, wiping out entire forests, making nations tremble, even activating birth pangs in pregnant deer. What, what is going on here? It's very odd. And by the end, by the way, God brings peace with just a word. Psalm 29 is likely modeled after an ancient Canaanite creation myth in which the god Baal is said to have created the universe using all this violence and chaos. Knowing that ancient creation story about Baal, the psalmist created Psalm 29 to sing of the God of Israel and how the God of Israel is to be revered for God's power and also ability to bring peace. This song is called Glory to You in the Storm. And I want to teach you a little refrain here that you can join me on. It goes like this. We cry, glory, glory, glory to you in the storm. Listen again. We cry, glory, glory, glory to you in the storm. Ready to try it? One, two. We cry, glory, glory, glory to you in the storm. We cry, glory, glory, glory to you in the storm. I've got three little verses, and then please join me on the refrain when it comes around again. Over the water, the voice of glory thunders, shaking the wilderness. Over the waters, the voice of glory thunders, shaking the wilderness. Ready? We cry, glory, glory, glory to you in the storm. We cry, glory, glory, glory to you in the storm. Good. We come to worship with all our senses open. Creation testifies. We come to worship with all our senses open. Creation testifies. Here we go. We cry, glory, glory, glory to you in the storm. Ba -da -da -da. We cry, glory, glory, glory to you in the storm. Holy 
forever you give to all your people blessings of strength and peace try that with me holy forever you give to all your people blessings of strength and peace yeah and we cry glory 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 to you in the storm glory to you we cry glory 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 to you in the storm let's do that one more time we cry glory 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 to you in the storm well glory to you we cry glory 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 to you in the storm Peter and John are sent to support the new Christians in Samaria, a group that was recently baptized after hearing the good news of Christ through the preaching of Philip. Here, the Samaritans receive the gift of the Holy Spirit in the laying on of hands. Now, when the apostles of Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord, Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Here ends the readings. Please stand for the gospel. For this day comes from St. Luke, the third chapter. The reading opens with questions about the identity of the Messiah. John the Baptist insists that he is not the Messiah. Instead, he points ahead to one who is coming. And whether the voice of God was heard by all or only by Jesus, God settles the matter. Jesus is God's beloved son. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing hook is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, when John also had been baptized and was praying, heaven was opened. The Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son. The beloved, with you, I am well pleased. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As you can see today, we have the banner out that has the verse from Isaiah 43, which we heard this morning. The verse that was put onto this banner by Eileen Smith with help from Gail Ballman in memory of Mick Meyer. And we use this banner for baptisms and for funerals. At both occasions, there's a space here in the verse where we can put the person's name, so we personalize it. So right now, I want you to think of yourself as this beloved one. So I'm gonna read it, and when when I get done with Fear Not, you're gonna say your first and your middle name which is usually how it's done at your baptism. And you just shout it out. I know it's going to be cacophony, but I think it'll be fun. Fear not, Lori, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. I love this verse. 
We worked really hard to get this banner made and I'm glad that we did. It's a very special centerpiece, particularly on a day like today when we think about the baptism of Jesus and our baptism, or we, when we have an actual baptism or a funeral of one of our beloved members. But the problem with a banner like this is this verse is presented to you completely out of context, kind of like a meme if you're into social media. And so standing by itself, fear not, it sounds kind of hopelessly naive. Fear not, um, banner, you have no idea. I have lots of things to fear. If I weren't fearing, I wouldn't be paying attention. Right now, in the midst of this pandemic, we might be saying, when will this pandemic end? Or actually the more right question they ask these days is, when will this pandemic be within manageable limits? <laughs> and we have all suffered a lot from it. I know it's easy to go, well, you know, I haven't personally suffered. I haven't been sick or I wasn't that sick. I don't have any family members that have died of COVID. I shouldn't complain. I hear a lot of people say that. But it doesn't mean, even though you're not complaining, it doesn't mean that you have not suffered loss. As a result, it's been almost two years, my friends, since the pandemic really hit here for us right here in the Midwest. And we have so much that we have lost, like people we might have seen, trips that we might have gone on, 90th birthday parties that we might have had, and we didn't get to. And so it's like, it's hard to even explain the loss that we have. And I just recently heard an interview with an author who really put a name to it. Dr. Pauline Boss calls it ambiguous loss. She says it's an extended period of grief where you don't really know when it's going to end. So there's this, this key element of uncertainty. And because it's uncertain, the grief and the pain is exacerbated and prolonged. And she explains that we've really all been through this in recent years here with the pandemic. She says what we have now is a pileup of losses that are unidentifiable. They're unverified. For example, loss of trust in the world as a safe place. Loss of our routines. On the most extreme side, there's a loss of being able to see a loved one when they're very, very ill or dying. Isaiah 43, when pulled out of context like this, might sound totally out of touch with our pain that we're experiencing as a world right now. But it was written at a time of another pain, another loss for the people of God. Because the prophet wrote this, he proclaimed these words to the people because he wanted to change their mind. They were hopeless. And he said, I want to change your mind. Don't be hopeless, people of God. And I tell you why they were hopeless. They were in exile. And as I explained, we're in a, a weird time of loss ourselves. But I think it's hard for us to even understand the carnage that was the exile. The people had suffered the loss of their homeland the loss of their temple, the loss of their community, the loss of their family members, their loss of their identity, and worst of all, their loss of faith in God. Everything had been lost for over a generation. But now, at the time that this was proclaimed to the people of God, the, the international climate was changing, and for the first time, there was a real hope that they might get to return to their homeland, their beloved Jerusalem, even though they knew that it had been ransacked. Maybe God had not forgotten them. Maybe they would get to go home. And so that's what the prophet offers these people. He offers them a word that is so good that it sounds preposterous to them. How can this goodness be? He says, God promises you neither fire nor flood will ever separate you from God and God's awesome grace. And this poetic passage, unfortunately, 
does not promise that there will not be fire and flood. I think we always get surprised when bad things happen to us. We say, Lord, I'm your faithful, hello. This shouldn't be happening to me. But never anywhere in scripture, especially not here, is it promised that the faithful will have an easy life. What we are promised is that when the fires come, when the floods come, and they inevitably will come, you're not alone. God will be with you. And God gives us to each other so that together we can walk through the floods and the fires. Because nothing can truly separate us from God's love, even when we sometimes lose faith about it. And these images of fire and water, they're very familiar to that ancient audience. They knew the stories. They always remember the story of Noah's Ark, where through the waters of the flood, God saved Noah and his family. And through the waters of the Red Sea, God delivered Moses and the Israelites from the, the iron fire of slavery in Egypt. And God's made known to them all on that Exodus journey in fire. A burning bush speaking to Moses, a pillar of fire that guides them, and fire on Mount Sinai when they're given the law. And finally, when they get to the promised land, they go through water again. They go through the Jordan River. It's the gateway to freedom. Fire and water. These things are with the people of God throughout their entire journey. And today, we celebrate the baptism of Jesus. Images of fire and water are in the passage that we heard from Luke today as well. Jesus comes down to be baptized in the Jordan River, that same river that is the symbol of freedom for God's ancient people. He comes to John to be baptized, and John, powerful preacher that he is, says, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And then, in the Jordan River, Jesus is baptized by John. He is called God's beloved son by God himself. And then he sent forth, as it were, sparked with fire, fired up, ready to go do his ministry. And we too have been baptized. We too have been baptized with water. Our sins have been cleansed from us. We too have been given the fire of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we don't feel it, but we know it's there. The Holy Spirit is with us and with this fire and with this water. We've been called to go out and do God's work in the world to make a difference for the kingdom of God. We have been given all of this. So the question is, how do we take the fire and water that is within us, the gift of God, to deal with the fire and the water, the floods out there. Because throughout the generations, not just now, but always, our ancestors have dealt with very dangerous forces outside of themselves that threaten them. The fires, the floods, the devastation. We have continued to have threats from outside. And yet God has always been faithful to us, reminding us that we have not been forgotten. It seems perhaps that God has forgotten us or at least stepped out of the room. But these testimonies of ancient scripture remind us that is not the case. No matter how bad the fire and the flood, God is with us, fueling us with our own fire and water so that we can deal with anything that comes at us. And this passage from Isaiah that comes to us was known as part of an oracle of salvation. God's people needed to hear it as we need to hear it today too. They would use it in worship as a part of liturgical response. What they would do is they would pray together the Psalms of lament. You know, the songs, Psalms that complain about everything that's wrong and unfair. I call them the whining Psalms. And there's a lot more of them than you would expect. Because the ancient people believed you don't have to lie to God. You can come right out and say how bad things are. God can handle it. You can complain all you want. 
So there's plenty of words of complaint that we can use if we don't have our own in the Bible. And the people of God would say together these songs of lament, but you know you want to leave on a high note, right? So instead of leaving it at that sad and sorrowful place, they would come back and they would read this oracle of salvation of which this one verse is part. But that whole section that we read this morning. So I would like for us to do our own experiment today. Are you ready? Let us lament. We have trials and tribulations with family members that test our patience. We lost my father to COVID and several family members and friends weren't able to be there. We have the loss of a nephew. Help us. The floods, the waters, we're fighting so much. Because of COVID, I can't travel and see my family members. Lord, are you listening? Lord, please comfort us. A little normalcy without being afraid for weddings, funerals. We've lost so much, social, family, friends. Why do we have to wear masks? We've lost friends, uncles, aunts. God, why do things feel so out of control? Why do we have such health problems? I haven't been able to travel. I have difficulties at work. My concert was canceled. Lord, how could you not do anything for us? We've had to cancel our trips. We have, haven't been able to go to Arizona. God, why did all these people die of COVID? Why is our political system so divided? Lord, listen to me. I didn't get to go anywhere last year. I don't like having to deal with these masks. Lord, have you forsaken us? We certainly feel the pain of all of these, and thank you so much for voicing them specifically. I think it's important for us to hear that we're not alone in our ambiguous loss. We've all lost so much. Let's turn now to Isaiah 43. And we'll read verses 1 and 2 in unison. It's on the first part of your celebrate insert. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Let us pray. Lord, we know that you hear our cries just as you heard the cries of our ancestors. We go through so much fire and flood. We feel overwhelmed and devastated, and we fear that you might not be with us. Please help us in our cries of lament, our many losses, both clear and ambiguous. Help us to cling on to our faith and to know that we have water within. We are your baptized children. We, like Jesus, are your beloved. And like our Lord Jesus, we too have fire within us. We have the fire of your Holy Spirit. Burn brightly within each one of us, Lord. Bring us back to life again for we are your resurrection people. We ask even in our weakness when we do not know how to pray or how to believe that you would come to rescue us as you always do. And you will give us everything that you see that we need as your beloved community. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in our saving Lord Jesus. Amen. the faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You have made a profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Christ? We do and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth. Cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Full the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made.
By the Holy Spirit, you gather your church and send it out in mission to share the good news of Jesus. Inspire your faithful people to be fervent in prayer and service, that all people know they are precious in God's sight. God of grace, hear our prayer. You reveal your love and power through water and the Spirit. Guard rivers, seas, and all bodies of water from destruction and pollution. Secure access to clean water for all. And protect the land from drought and flood. God of grace, hear our prayer. Establish among the nations the blessings of peace. Raise up leaders who will protect vulnerable people in their care. Strengthen advocates who risk reputation or retaliation for the sake of mercy and justice. God of grace, hear our prayer. You protect us through the fires and troubled waters of this life. Assure us that we will not be cut off from you by illness or despair, anxiety or pain, confusion or weakness. Comfort all who are in need. God of grace, hear our prayer. We are joined in baptism to Christ and to one another. Bless those who are newly baptized and those preparing for baptism. Help us to be faithful in fellowship, worship, evangelism, service, and justice-seeking. God of grace, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the life of Jean Huffy and the celebration of her 90th birthday this week. We pray for your continued blessing upon her life. God of grace, hear our prayer. You create each of your saints for your glory. We give you thanks for those you have called into your eternal embrace. We remember especially our former organist, Doug Schaefer. Comfort us in grief and release us from fear. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
let the light of grace go out with a smile on your face. Thanks be to God. are in honor of Jean Huffy's 90th birthday, which was this, this. <laughs> Can you come and sit down? <laughs> 